Hey guys, my name is Ashley, I'm a vet tech, and I am taking the Vitney in December 2019. So, <coughs> I'm getting prepared by studying my most difficult subjects. The one that I'm going over today is dentistry. Stick around if you want to learn something or just review with me. Okay, so the four kind of layers that I want to talk about are the enamel, dentin, pulp, and cementum. Then there's also a periodontal membrane slash ligament thing that I'm gonna go over. So the enamel is the crown section of your tooth. It's the white portion, so it's what you see. This is made up mostly of um, calcium phosphate. The next layer is going to be the dentin, and the dentin is the bulk of the tooth. It's a yellowish color. It is considered a hard connective tissue that is made up of collagen and calcium. <laughs> Next is the pulp. That is the section of your tooth that has all the nerves. So if you ever get a cracked tooth that goes all the way down, it's going to hurt really bad. Pulp is the softest layer of the tooth, of course, and it is made of nerves, vessels, odontoblasts, connective tissues, and lymphatics. The next layer is the cementum, and the cementum is the surface layer of the tooth root. It attaches teeth to the alveolar bone by anchoring the periodontal ligament. And that brings me into what I want to talk about next. So the periodontal membrane and ligament slash and or slash ligament. This is just a collagen fiber that attaches the tooth to the bone. Pretty much it just keeps the tooth in place. The next thing I wanted to talk about because it's really important, especially for questions about the location of the tooth or locations of caries, dental caries, which are um, just cavities of the teeth, um, <clears throat> also x-rays or anything else like that, you're going to have to know um, like the positioning of where the teeth are located. So I'm going to go into that. Rostral and caudal. So rostral is more towards the front and caudal is more towards the back. So using this, um, using an example would be like the incisors are more rostral and the molars are more caudal in the mouth. Buccal and labial as well as palatal and lingual. So bu buccal, I hope I'm saying that right, you guys know. Um, is more towards the cheek, so the surface of the tooth that is going to be touching the cheek on the inside. Um, labial is more towards the mouth or the yeah the lips, so the surface of the teeth that are touching the lips. Palatal is going to be the surface of the tooth touching the palate, so this is going to be your um, max maxilla, and then the mandible is going to be your labial. Oh, not labial. So your mandible is going to be your lingual. So it's going to be the surface of the tooth that's more towards the tongue. You also have facial, and that's just the teeth that you can see from the front. So um, most likely talking about your incisors. And lastly, apical. I'm going to say apical. I'm going to go with apical because it sounds like apex. And coronal. So coronal, I think of a crown. So it's going to be more towards the crown of the tooth. And then um, apical or apical is going to be more towards the root of the tooth, so the point of the tooth towards either the top if you're looking at the maxillary or the bottom if you're looking at the mandible. So next, I wanted to talk about dental formulation. So these are a pain in my, you know what, um, because it's just a bunch of numbers and to me it doesn't really mean too much, um, obviously for professionals who are taking teeth out and stuff like that they need to know but I'm just like why do I need to know these numbers anyway I'm gonna go through um, the formula and then the number of teeth that animals gonna have I'm just going to name it off as it's something that we just need to memorize and know for the test so yeah I'm just gonna say it like that I'm gonna write it up so you can see right here so let's get into it so dogs have 42 teeth. Their um, dental formulation is two for the top and the bottom. And then you're gonna have parentheses I for incisor, and it's gonna be three on the top and three on the bottom. Then you're gonna have C for canine, one on the 
the top and one on the bottom. P for premolar, four on the top, four on the bottom, and M for molar, and that's gonna be two on the top and three on the bottom. If you add all of those together and then you multiply it by two, you're gonna have 42, and that's how many teeth they should have. Now, some little notes that you should know about the dental formulation or the, the teeth in general on dogs. All permanent incisors and canine teeth have only one root. Maxillary premolars two and three have two roots. Premolar number three has three roots. Premolar four, molar one and two have three roots. How do you remember that? I don't know, but anyway. Premolar one on the top and the bottom have one root. Premolars two, three, and four on the bottom have two roots. Molar one and two have two roots. Okay, so that was fun. Uh, let's move on. Cats. Cats have cats have 30 teeth in total. So their formulation is going to be, I'm not gonna keep saying two or parentheses or anything like that because you'll see it up on here, but I'll say it um, as far as incisors, three on the top, three on the bottom, uh, canine, one on the top, one on the bottom, premolar, three on the top, two on the bottom, and molars, one on the top and one on the bottom. And this is just for like the right side or the left side. Cows, sheep, and goats have 32 teeth. incisors on the top, three on the bottom, zero canine on the top, one on the bottom, premolars, three premolars on the top, three on the bottom, and three molars on the top and three on the bottom. So 32 teeth guys. Horses. Horses have, horses have 28 teeth. Now, their dental formulation. They have three incisors on the top, three incisors on the bottom, zero to one canine on the top, zero to one canine on the bottom. This just means that they may or may not have a canine on the top or on the bottom, depending on the breed or whatever. Three to four premolars on the top and four premolars on the bottom and three, premol three molars on the top and three molars on the bottom. Okay, so pigs are the easiest ones to learn. They're going to have a really super simple, um, like whole number situation going on for their um, dental formulation. So on the top is um, three incisors, bottom three incisors, one canine, one canine, four premolars, four premolars, and then three um, man molars and three molars on the bottom as well. They're gonna have 44 teeth. They do have needle teeth, they have about eight of them. When they are born, they need to be cut within 24 hours of them being born, okay? Then we have lagomorphs. Lagomorphs, just like horses, have 28 teeth. Their dental formulation is also different, just like all of them. All of them have different teeth. <laughs> so, for rabbits, they have two incisors on the top, two, or lagomorphs, I'm sorry. They have two incisors on the top, one on the bottom. Canines, they don't have any canines. Premolars, they have three on the top and two on the bottom. And for molars, they have three on the top and three on the bottom. Total of 28 teeth. Then we have rat, rats and mice, and, the, and these have 16 teeth total. So what they're gonna have is the two Incisor um, is one, one, zero canines, zero premolars, and three molars, 16 teeth in total. For the types of teeth, so there's brachiodont and hypsodont, and horses are hypsodont, uh, ra ra radicular, 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 something like that. And this just means that their, t their teeth um, continuously erupt, but they're not continuously growing. And then um, a radicular means that they are continuously growing, and um, these are rodents, lagomorphs, and chinchillas. That just means that their teeth are continuously growing. So the next thing I wanted to go through was um, some vocabulary words that we're gonna have to know. I have a whole bunch of them here. Ooh, you can't even see them. 
have a whole bunch of them, but um, you guys probably already know most of them, so I'm just going to go through a few that are important. And so attrition, attrition just means like the wearing down of the teeth, like by grinding or like mastication. Next would be calculus, that's just build up of plaque that hardens onto the tooth. Sometimes you can brush it off, sometimes you can't. Well, endodontics is any like um, procedure that is that affects the pulp of the tooth. So like a root, like a root canal. Floating. Floating has to do with horses mainly. You have to shave down their teeth periodically and uh, you use an instrument called a float so that's why it's called floating. Halitosis just means bad breath. And the last one I want to talk about was sulcus. I've had a few questions on Vet Tech Prep about this, and it just says that the sulcus should be zero to three millimeters deep. It's the pocket under the gingiva. Greater, greater than zero to three millimeters just means that there is periodontal disease. So why is it important? Why, why do we need to know this? First of all, we need to pass this test, so that's why it's important. Second of all, over the age of three years, 70 to 80 percent of our small animals, so dogs and cats, will get periodontal disease because our owners are not taking care of their teeth. So we need to be able to explain the importance of it. We need to know what to look for and we need to be able to, once it does happen, um, take care of this for our owners and also be able to explain why we need, why do we need to do these procedures on our animals? Why do I need to pay $400 um, for my dog to get a dental done? Well, because your dog can't eat, ma'am because your dog's teeth are falling out, because he has disease growing in his mouth. Come on, guys, take care of your pets. Anyway, so um, I wanted to do something different today. I wanted to ask some questions at the end. I'm going to write the answers in uh, the description box below, um, but answer answer in the comment section what you think it is before you look, so I know, like, you know, who knows what, and also, um, I'd like to learn, like, if you guys know something that I didn't talk about, like, write it down there, okay? So, yeah. The first question is, what species does not have canine teeth? I'll just go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. Number two, what is the importance of polishing the teeth after um, your dental cleaning? Why do we polish the teeth? What's the reasoning? Number three, what dental instrument is used to measure the periodontal pockets? What is the word that means the inflammation of the tongue? And number five is a little bit more difficult, but let's see who can, who can figure this one out. What medications cause gingival hyperplasia? Okay, I have three of them on here, and if you can figure them out, then awesome. You're super smart. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.